The Asus VivoBook Flip 14 The kind of a laptop which seemed good to suggest to a friend and forcefully make him deliver to my address and use it for about 10 days before writing this review. So hold on tight because this ride is quite flippity and long. Hey everyone, Mukul here. So this Ryzen 4000 series laptop recently went on sale in India and it was the perfect time to suggest it to a friend who had been waiting for a good laptop with some nice features on it. Like it flipping and doing yoga and stuff. In the box you get some cardboard support, a very light charger and a stylus pin and the laptop of course. I mean it's a laptop box after all so the laptop should be inside the box. The pen needs a battery inside of it but for the first use make sure you remove the paper on top of its battery and or you would be left wondering why isn't it working. This color which is bespoke black looks quite grey with a tinge of blue on it and a little noise on the material. The finish is matte but still fingerprinting the hell out of it isn't tough. So yeah the smudges are going to be a problem as you carefully caress it with your hand every now and then for some reason. Let us quickly go through the specs of this. The model I am reviewing came with the Ryzen 4500U which has 6 core and no threads so basically make, making it a 6 core CPU. It also came with the two dual channel 8GB Samsung memory modules at 3200 MHz and hence going in sync with the CPU clocks which the Ryzen CPUs just love. The graphics are integrated so do not buy this if you have gaming in mind but I did some gaming tests which will come ahead. The screen is 14 inches full HD and doesn't cover a great sRGB color gamut space as it is about 59%. It came with a Samsung M.2 512 GB SSD with Windows 10 Home and MS Office installed in it. And you can go through the rest of the specs on the screen. I mean you can just pause it and go through them. There are quite a number of vents on the laptop for proper ventilation of hot versus cold air and whatnot. They are at the back and at the sides, not in the front though, which sucks if you wanted a free heater for the winters. The hinges are metallic so that the pen can stick to them with this extra magnetic pen holder it came with, which I didn't show earlier for some reason. Hey, <laughs> The inside of the laptop has the same material as the outside. And you can't open the laptop with one hand and if you try to, then get ready to face your biggest failure in life yet. Also, when you lift the screen up, the laptop lifts itself and hence providing its vents ample space to let that hot air pass through. But despite it being a 1.5 kg laptop, this certainly felt heavy whilst I was taking the shot. Smartphones have made us weak. A few smartphones, a few. But this laptop exhibited a great build. It feels rock solid and if you attempt to go jerry rig over it, you can't really bend it. Or maybe I'm just weak. But no, I would rather say the laptop is really strong. And it is, you have to believe it now. Well, this is a secret and make sure nobody knows it, but I actually opened up the laptop and this was one of the easiest laptops to open up. It opened up so well to me that now I know the exact emotional state of it. Well, inside you can see a single heat pipe solution for the processor and two speakers next to a battery which isn't that consumer friendly to replace if you would ever want to replace it yourself. And there's that Intel Wi-Fi 6 chip and this is probably where the SSD is and this is where the dual channel RAM is hiding. Both are from Samsung and one of the 4GB RAM modules is soldered and the other one is fitted in this slot. So if you ever want to upgrade then you would need to remove one of the 4GB modules and add more. But you anyway can't add more than 8GB in the slot as the laptop can't support it. And I'm extremely sorry that I couldn't open these slots much as I didn't want to fiddle with the laptop more as it didn't belong to me. So let's talk about the ports now as there are many of them. But why should I read them when you can just read them yourself here? But maybe I should just shut up though. But a mute video would look really boring. So yeah, how is life? Enjoying the weird times? I think you're probably buying a laptop to pass this time, right? The power button is assisted with this white light next to it when you turn on the laptop. So can we finally start talking about all the aspects of this laptop now? Yeah, thanks. Did I just talk to myself in a video? So let's start with the display first. It's an extremely glossy 14 inch screen and your fingerprint smudges will be all over it. The bezels on the side are quite narrow and the top is quite tolerable too, but the bottom bezel is really thick. Fatter than your average uh, fat person, I guess. As already mentioned, the screen isn't the best one out there, but really for casual usage and even for some productive usage, it is fine. In many of the software, it won't feel bad either. It's one of the budget IPS touchscreen panels made by BOE running at 60Hz but it's a touchscreen and also supports the pen it came with. The viewing angles are mostly okay. 
I tried to replicate it on the camera and it mostly looks like this in reality too. Slight variation in viewing won't make the color suffer much and I have seen many screens behave the same in some of the slightly expensive var variants too from other manufacturers. The contrast ratio is average but what was really impressive was its overall brightness. I mean it's so bright that if you ever want to use it in a dark environment, the lowest brightness too can hurt your eyes. Do note that on battery mode, the brightness kind of decreases to 10 or 15% from its peak levels. But outdoors, the screen might not look that great in terms of both brightness and being glossy doesn't help its case too. There's quite an apparent backlight bleeding in the panel which is quite unavoidable on many screen panels out there. But there was no visible color tinting which is brilliant and quite assuring for the panel's quality to some extent. Another thing which was really impressive was its touch response. I mean it's really good. I haven't tried more expensive touchscreen laptops here, but this felt great and I have no complaints with it. But what really sucked was the pen latency on software like Photoshop for example. If you are contemplating this laptop from an artist's perspective, then just don't. But if you are someone who wants to write stuff on let's say software like uh, Microsoft OneNote or just scribble around uh, on some of the screenshots, it would be good for those purposes. The keyboard layout is without the numpad keys because it's a compact 14 inch laptop but there is an extra column of keys to the right. The enter key has this distinction because it wants to feel unique, okay? You can disable or enable function keys as either dedicated function keys or hot keys with a combination of function plus escape key, which is quite convenient. The feel of these keys is like most of your typical laptop keys in this price category, which are soft and mushy. So these are soft and mushy too, just like your darling. Ahem. I did make a few errors while trying to type fast on the keyboard, but if you are used to these type of keys, then you won't have much complaints with it. I personally love uh, typing on a mechanical keyboard. The touchpad is okay, nothing extraordinary going on here except for that fingerprint scanner which is pretty fast and helps you save time from entering that pen or password. The time which you can later waste 10 times more on Facebook. Face unlock isn't supported though. The top end of the touchpad doesn't click mechanically like how it does at the bottom. The two speakers on the laptop sound fine and are quite stable with almost no amount of muffle even at peak volumes. But once you change the speaker output mode to movie in this Asus audio manager software, they turn even louder which is a far better sound level for the laptop speakers. So my suggestion is to always keep them in movie mode for a much better volume. So what do you do when you want the latest OnePlus flagship phone but you don't want to spend uh, that amount for it? The webcam has a small light next to it which lets when you start using it. Here's a video sample from the camera. So this is how the video quality is. In nighttime inside my house which is quite well lit right now. The cap never stays straight which is a hard thing. Right now there's a fan switched on on top of me and kind of regenerating the natural scenarios which most of you would be using this laptop in. Now because this laptop knows yoga and stuff, it flips and it flips well and as soon as it flips it will ask you if you want to also flip. I mean it will ask you if you want to activate the tablet mode. And if you're someone who is ready to carry this laptop in portrait mode because you have huge biceps and stuff, then be my guest and do it. I mean YouTube keeps playing if you turn off the screen in the tablet mode so that's one convenience it has. The auto rotate works fine but it definitely needs to be at an angle to detect that. So many DNTs. And the tablet mode will make you recall that weird start menu button which was once forced on us and later fixed by Microsoft. So yeah if you dig the tablet mode on Windows you might like this. For me this is like an awkward alien planet where I'm stuck with some awkward aliens I guess. Or maybe it was me who was the awkward one. Wait, I think I feel like that all the time on Earth. So let's now talk about its performance. Okay, the processor is pretty great for your average task and the laptop overall responded extremely snappy. Menial task likes browsing, Microsoft officing, general media consumption, etc. behaved wonderfully fluid on the laptop. This with the combination of a touch screen made multitasking much more easier for someone like me. Especially if you plan to use the laptop for its sheer portability feature and don't want to always hook a mouse to it. Because really, I don't understand you hooking up a laptop to a mouse. If you know what I mean. Selecting multiple icons and dragging dropping them felt really good to do by fingers on a Windows OS. 
Well, it wasn't actually fair to benchmark this laptop in extreme CPU intensive tasks like rendering and video editing, especially at 4K, as this is basically targeted to consumers who don't want to throw such heavy tasks uh, on this, but I did it anyway. There were only two options available in the power plan settings, so I chose the ASUS recommended one for these tests. As well, because it was recommended by ASUS on an ASUS laptop. Checking some quick Geekbench scores with the power connected to the laptop, the multi-core performance jumped by about 25% and with the single-core performance staying the same. Testing the onboard graphic performance, the performance increased to about 70% with the power connected to the laptop. So yeah, clearly, like in every laptop case, for intensive tasks, do not forget to hook that power cable in. The Cinebench R20 score averaged about uh, to 2000 in three of my attempts, which is actually closer to an Intel 7700K performance, which was released about three years back as one of Intel's flagship processors. And the 4500U on this laptop is not even a high tier processor from this generation. Let that sink in for a while. During some Blender benchmarking, the BMW test took about 8 minutes and the classroom test took a whopping 23 minutes on the laptop. And during the Blender test, the temperatures always stayed under 70 degrees Celsius and the all 6 core frequency peaked till 2.9 GHz. The power consumption was around 15 watts during the Blender test. I was actually a bit shocked to see the laptop able to handle a 4K video file way better than expected on a premier timeline. Scrubbing through the timeline with the 4K video imported actually worked and the lag was acceptable for the kind of specs this laptop has. It rendered a 2 minutes 1080p clip with some transition and couple of title effects in about 1 minutes and 4 seconds and another 4K 2 minutes clip in 1 minute 55 seconds. But I did notice that if I had applied a lot of title effects on the clip, the rendering kinda halted during the 4K test until I restarted the laptop. So do keep that in mind. I played Counter-Strike GO on the laptop too and these were the average frame rates. It was quite unplayable at high settings, but on medium or low settings, the laptop was able to play it quite comfortably with some random uh, frame drops, but hey, you did not buy this laptop for gaming, right? Right? There was no thermal throttling reported by HW Info during all these tests, which was a good sign of how the laptop and the processor are handling the thermals, even with just that single heat pipe on it. But what was really noticeable was this area, which generated a lot of heat on the surface during these tests. I mean, if you are generally typing on the laptop, this will never ever happen. But if you are rendering in the background and typing a rant against that movie you hated, let's say on Twitter, then yeah, you can definitely feel the heat, baby. Baby? During all these tests, I also made sure to keep the fan mode to performance in the ASUS provided software. And talking about this software, it helps you do a lot of things and I really like the UI which looked quite suited to the modern design language of software UIs in 2020. The other software it came with was Audio Manager and as discussed before, the movie mode makes the volume amplify quite a bit from the speakers. And yeah, I removed the McCafe's free month trial as soon as I saw it on the laptop. I think for smart people, Windows Defender is more than enough. No, I'm not calling myself smart. I'm calling you smart. The user interface of the BIOS is quite straightforward too. There is an easy mode and an advanced mode for people who are advanced user and know what they are doing with their lives. Or is it the opposite way? The battery charged completely in about 90 minutes and ASUS claims it can be charged up to 60% in about 49 minutes. Playing YouTube videos for long at 80% brightness and at full volume, the laptop consumed 50% of its battery in about 2 hours. So yeah, I expect a battery backup from somewhere around 4 hours to 6 hours on full charge, which totally depends on your usage. The kind of usage you have, the kind of battery backup you will get. And here are the noise levels at idle and load. In reality, it won't be this audible as this was tested in a controlled environment of my living room. So in conclusion, the laptop is a great asset overall for a lot of less CPU intensive tasks and even for a few of very CPU intensive tasks like renting a 4K video sector, which actually uh, surprised me that it could even do that. But don't expect this to be your primary tool for all that heavy stuff. It can definitely very well handle them as even the budget focused Ryzen 4500U impressed me by what all it can take by consuming just 15 watts of power at peak usage and yet managing a decent battery life on the laptop. 
and that fast charging combo with it is actually good if you would want to call it fast charging as some of you may have been already spoiled by how fast we charge our phones these days the screen could have been a bit better but many a times we rarely see a better screen in this budget with such great touch response on the screen i think why we don't get a dedicated gpu or even a better screen in this budget on the laptop is due to the fact that it has a flippy touch screen which can also convert your laptop to a quite heavy uh, windows tablet so the cost factor kind of deviates it from having a better performance hardware to these extra feature which might entice a different set of consumers who are not looking for just performance from their laptop and are more into features and portability i will post the laptop purchase links in the description below do leave a like and sub with the bell if this video helped you in any way and enjoy flipping it if you end up choosing this laptop and by flipping i mean flipping it that's all for today mubot out